Hi, it's Heather from Thicketworks, and today I'm going to share how to use a cool faux patina technique with the new 3D texture fades embossing folders from Tim Holtz. This technique depends on metallic cardstock, and if you want to make your own, I'll link to the video that shows you how to do just that. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Foundry 3D embossing folder and also the Mechanics 3D embossing folder, both of which are really cool industrial designs. If you're using a Sizzix Big Shot or Big Kick, you'll only need a single cutting plate placed on top of the embossing folder before you run it through your machine. That supplies plenty of pressure to create a vivid, deep impression. Create as many embossed panels as you'll need for whatever project you're embarking on. I needed quite a few to cover a cigar box, so I ended up with six panels of each design. If you're embossing regular cardstock, make certain to spritz it lightly with water prior to embossing. That will prevent it from tearing. We'll begin building up the layers for a fun faux verdigris effect with archival ink in coffee. This is a nice rich brown that brings the golden tones of the foil to an even richer depth. Next, I'll be adding Viridian Archival Ink to give a slight green undertone to the card. For rich teal accents, I'll reach for Archival Ink in Aquamarine. That will bring a little more intensity to the final finish. And yep, I'm enjoying that. That looks nice and rich. To bring in a little bit of grunge, next I'm reaching for Metallic Luster in Copper Kettle. This is a metallic wax similar to Inca Gold, and you just buff it onto the surface with a fingertip. This adds just a hint of fantasy rust tones to the piece. I'll follow this same procedure for all of the little foundry panels. But next, I'm going to turn my attention to the mechanics panels, and this will begin with Iced Espresso Metallic Luster. This is a rich medium brown metallic wax, and it's going to tone down that gaudy gold finish. The next layer on this 3D texture fade will be metallic luster in copper kettle to bring out that sort of rusty feel to portions of each panel. And now we have a more nuanced finish. Once this wax is set, now I'm going to come in with the archival inks first in Viridian for green accents. The next layer will be Aqua Marine archival ink to bring out those teal highlights. Archival inks will not fully dry on a non-porous surface like this metallic cardstock, and we're going to turn that to our advantage in just a moment. But meanwhile, I'll finish up creating all of the panels needed for my project. The metallic foil can tend to bubble when a heat source is applied. This doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it adds to the grunge factor. So when those bubbles appear, I just press down with a piece of chipboard to secure everything in place. Because the archival ink remains moist to the touch, it's easy to add a layer of ultra thick embossing enamel or UT right over the top. And this will perform two functions for us. Firstly, it will securely bond the archival ink to the metallic surface. And secondly, it will create a layer of translucent shininess right over the top, giving even more luster and interest to these panels. Once you've used your 3D texture fades to create these amazing embossed panels, you can do just about anything you'd like with them. I'm going to be covering a simple cigar box. Using 3-in-1 advanced craft glue from Beacon, it's easy to attach these panels securely to just about any substrate. I'm using these panels to create 
a collage or mosaic that will cover the majority of the exterior of this box. I'm avoiding having the panels extend all the way to the edges, however. That might result in an uneven and rough finish, so I'm holding those panels shy and allowing a bit of the original box to remain visible right around the edges. Once the panels are in place, I can come back and trim away any excess and neaten up the lines left by the edges of the panels. I'm liking the way that the foundry panels are framing the mechanics panels in the center. For the sides of the box, one panel each of the mechanics design fits perfectly within the parameters of that sidewall. And we are getting very close to the end of the mosaic or collage portion of this project. Just one more mosaic to put in place, and that's for the back of the box. And the focal panel is now framed by two of the smaller foundry panels. I'm loving the juxtaposition of the textures and the slight variations in color that we've achieved with our faux verdigris technique. The addition of the UT coating just gives this a luster and depth of finish that I adore, bringing all that exquisite detail to vivid life. The layers of metallic waxes and rich archival inks create a subtle and beautifully complex finish. I'll be using a Sharpie oil-based marker to create a black frame around the edges of the entire box. I love these markers. You can see it's such a rich dark black and because it dries to a semi-gloss finish it has almost a lacquer feel at the end of the process. As a bonus it dries really quickly. And there we have it. A great way to use the new 3D texture fades embossing folders plus a faux patina technique to help you really bring them to life. Add a few lining papers to the inside of your box and you have a beautiful presentation piece for a friend or a treasure box for yourself. If you haven't yet tried the 3D embossing folders from Tim Holtz, I hope you'll give them a try. There are unlimited possibilities with these amazing tools. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It's been a pleasure sharing these techniques with you. Until next time.